In this video, we'll be talking about glucocorticoids. So glucocorticoids are hormones that are secreted from the adrenal gland. Adrenal glands are glands situated on the top of the kidney, which secretes three important steroid hormones, mineralocorticoid, glucocorticoid, and sex steroids. Today, our focus would be on glucocorticoid and its biological function molecular mechanism. So one thing has to be remembered. All of these hormones are steroids. That means cholesterol derivatives. So the major glucocorticoid is cortisol. Cortisol, obviously, it's a steroid hormone. It's a cholesterol derivative. And it's also known as a stress hormone. So whenever our body is undergoing stress, cortisol levels are going up. So in a moment, it would be clear what is the biological function of cortisol. So let's begin. In this video, we would first look at the molecular mechanism of cortisol action. Eventually, we would look at the secretion kinetics of the cortisol. We would talk about the biosynthesis of cortisol. And we are going to talk about the biological function of cortisol in great detail. So stay tuned till the end of this video and you would get a total flavor. Beginning with functions of cortisol up front. So cortisol has different types of function. One of the major one is the stress response. So it's also known as a stress hormone. It regulates metabolism. Almost all the type of metabolism is regulated by cortisol. In a moment, it would be detailed how. It's a potent suppressor of inflammation. That is why it is also used as immunosuppressant. And it regulates blood glucose level. It basically increases the blood glucose level. It has an anti-insulin activity. So we are going to elaborate on all these functions, but let's focus on the biosynthesis of this glucocorticoid. So obviously it is basically a cholesterol derivative. Now the uh, formation is not that straightforward. Cholesterol is converted to several derivatives such as pregnenolone. Pregnenolone eventually get converted into 17 hydroxy progesterone. And in subsequent steps, it ultimately forms the cortisol. So this is an overall sort of journey of cort uh, cortisol biosynthesis. Now, in the adrenal cortex, there are different layers. Zona granulosa, zona fasciculata, and zona reticularis. Zona granulosa give rise to mineralocorticoids, which regulates mineral balance, such as aldosterone. Zona fasciculata is the region which gives rise to glucocorticoids, that means cortisol, that regulates glucose metabolism, stress, etc. So cortisol, cortisone, and corticosterone are the hormones, main glucocorticoids among these. So we are going to focus more on the cortisol because that's a major one. And also important to note that zona reticularis give rise to androgens that are responsible for secondary sexual characteristics. Now let's talk about cortisol secretion. So when it comes to the secretion, it follows a diurnal rhythm. There is high level of cortisol during the daytime and it falls down during night. And the secretion is stringently regulated by a hypothalamus, pituitary and adrenal axis. So from the hypothalamus, corticotropin releasing hormone is basically uh, uh, secreted. So it acts on the pituitary and allow the secretion of ACTH or adrenal corticotropic hormone. ACTH moves to the adrenal gland and stimulates the adrenal cortex to secrete cortisol. Now, when there is too much of cortisol in the blood, there is a negative feedback loop that operates. In short term, this negative feedback loop acts on pituitary, reduces the ACTH level, but in the long term, it reduces the CRH level. Thereby, using a closed negative feedback loop, cortisol levels in the blood can be stringently regulated and monitored. Now let's talk about the biological function of this glucocorticoid. So when it comes to the biological function, cortisol act on different organs, especially on the liver, the metabolic hub. So that totally tells us that cortisol is really important for various aspects of metabolism. It also acts on the adipose tissue, muscles, etc. All of these tissues are actually highly metabolically active. In the liver, it breaks down the glycogen to make glucose. It ensures that glycogenolysis happens and glucose level increases. It also prevents the glycogenesis procedure. That means glucose getting converted into glycogen. Cortisol in the um, adipose tissue breaks down fat into free fatty acids. And in the muscle, it breaks down the protein to free up the amino acid. So 
overall it sort of ensured that the small molecules that are required for energy generation under stressful moment is actually available in the blood so it's kind of like a potent regulator of catabolism and it prevents anabolism as well now in the blood cortisol ensures that the glucose level remains high and glucose cannot be uptaken by the muscle and liver because in the stressful mo moment our brain need more and more glucose in the blood the glucose level should be high and it also ensures that glycogen is broken down to produce glucose such that we get enough amount of glucose the fuel to overcome this stressful situation also it can make uh, glucose from other molecules such as amino acid by the process of neoglucogenesis so overall it has a anti insulin activity it blocks actually insulin's overall effect when it comes to the immune system glucocorticoid like cortisol has a potent immunosuppressant uh, immunosuppressant effect so cortisol actually decreases inflammation but also increases the risk of some infection Cortisol injection is used by the doctors when the skin graft is uh, given. So it it would suppress the overall immune system's hyperactivity and prevent the graft rejection. Cortisol suppress the immune system by preventing T cell or dendritic cell to secrete cytokine. Generally T cell, dendritic cell and many other immune cell would secrete many cytokines such as interleukin 12, interferon gamma etc. Cortisol prevents that formation. Cortisol also triggers the formation of interleukin 10 by the T regulatory cell which is anti-inflammatory in nature. So overall cortisol increases the blood glucose level which is really important for the overall function of the body. And we discussed that it's a potent immunosuppressing agent. So these are the two important things that we should talk about when we think about cortisol. And in different videos, we talked about several immunosuppressing agents. And one of the potent one is actually cortisol, especially gi given when there is a tissue graft operation kind of thing. Anyway, it inhibits the immune system by inhibiting interferon production or let's say interleukin production and promoting interleukin 10 production when it comes to bones then cortisol has a osteoclastic activity it breaks down it dissolves the bone so basically there are two types of cells cortis uh, there are two types of cells one of the cell is basically osteoblast another is osteoclast it promotes the osteoclastic activity let us talk about the molecular mechanism of cortisol. Cortisol acts via steroid receptor because it's a steroid hormone. It can easily move through the plasma membrane and go to the intercellular receptor which are present in the cytoplasm. Generally, these receptors are held by Hitchcock protein 90. But when the ligand binds, this entire complex would move to the nucleus and bind to hormone response elements. Then it would secrete several hormones which are responsible for encountering stress and overall glucose metabolism. This is how cortisol worked at a molecular level. So it is important to maintain very stringent level of cortisol in the blood because excessive level of cortisol in the blood lead to a syndrome known as Cushing syndrome, which I have a detailed video on. But anyway, low level of uh, cortisol is also bad. Some people take corticosteroids during specific surgery and all that might lead to cortisol in, uh, uh, increase. Also, many times adrenal gland tumor might lead to overproduction of the glucocorticoids. So in terms of summary, we looked at how it alters the metabolism, how it change different aspects of protein, carbohydrate and fat metabolism. So I hope this was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. You can get notes and flashcards in our website as well as Instagram or Facebook. Follow us and don't forget to support us because without your support, we cannot make all these high quality contents which are available to you absolutely for free. So see you in next video.